I'm John Hart. I'm the CEO of Lumetrix. Today I'm going to talk about an advanced catheter measurement system. Before we get into the features and benefits of the product, one of the things that we have instituted in our company is what we call the uh, 360 assessment. And basically what we do is we work with customers in the very beginning of the sales process to determine what their return on investment would be by putting our systems into their factory or into their lab. Um, we look at several factors. One of them is increasing revenue. Uh, does it enable new product development? Uh, we look at increased speed to market. And we have some examples actually on our website. Uh, company uh, Tesco lets us use their name. Uh, Tesco went from about a four month trial to get a uh, dye into production down to about four weeks because they could measure product uh, as it came off the dye. In our evaluation, we look at reducing um, scrap, a big issue with some of our customers. Uh, ensuring FDA compliance because you can now measure more parts, measure them more accurately. Um, one of the things we do a lot of, our engineering group, is gauge R&Rs. And in many, many instances, our gauge R&Rs are down in the 2, 3, and 4 percent range. So very, very good R&R uh, &R readings. Again, that really is dependent upon tooling. Um, and when we do the tooling right, we get very good numbers. And lower labor costs. Everybody wants to reduce manual intervention on a product and automate their processes. Uh, we are the leader in measurement solutions to the medical market since 2003. We are in six of the top 11 medical device companies. Um, in most cases, in multiple locations, in multiple countries. Uh, we give customers outstanding return on investment. Um, sometimes you see as uh, short a payback as a three month time frame. Our three primary markets are medical, ophthalmic, and then we call it industrial, which includes pharmaceutical, food packaging, and glass. Um, again, in the very beginning of the process, for the customer's benefit and for our benefit, we always get into our 360 evaluation to determine can we provide a solution that will give them a good return on investment. We have full systems capability in our facility. Um, we do optical design. We do customer software development, custom software development internally. Uh, we have a very good mechanical engineering and design group. And in the very big jobs, we partner with integrators when the customer wants uh, full closed loop feedback control uh, in the factory. This is a typical OptiGauge system. Uh, a monitor just below that is what we call the OptiGauge itself, which is a low coherence interferometer. Uh, and then it's coupled to an industrial uh, PC. Some of the features and benefits. It's non-contact. It uses light. Um, harmless infrared light. There's really no laser safety rating needed because it's uh, not a laser. It's a superluminescent diode, which is a wide bandwidth light source. It's non-destructive and non-toxic. Um, the readings are real-time uh, for online or lab use. So if you come over to our booth, we can show you a demo. If you block the optical beam, the data stops. You unblock it, the data starts immediately. We can measure multiple layers simultaneously. Um, independent of substrate measurement or variability. So I think our largest we've ever seen is probably about a seven layer uh, substrate of packaging material. Uh, we're doing an interesting one right now for a food packaging company which is three layers uh, online as they package their food product um, as they make it and that one is a closed loop control system. Uh, immediate results, uh, portable and easy setup. Many of our customers will put our system on a uh, a cart, go from one spot in their factory or their lab to a different spot. Um, we do have what's called optical switching. So we have applications now where you can put up to eight different probes on a production line. Uh, in one instance, there's a five layer uh, medical film. Uh, we actually measure the adhesive as, as it's being put onto a substrate in a liquid form. Uh, we measure it as it comes out of an 80-foot oven in a uh, solid form. It's like a wide web of scotch tape. Uh, we measure 
three layers as it's laminated together, and then we measure all five layers when the complete process is done. And that's all done with one optic gauge and an optical switch and eight optical probes. We also have probes in hazardous environments, some are in explosion proof environments, and uh, ATEX certification is not an issue because it's a passive device. Um, multiple applications with a single system. We have in some cases, in that food packaging case, we have one optic gauge, one optical switch, eight probes on four different production lines. Uh, there is no limit to, from the optic gauge itself to the optical probe, you could have fiber that stretches a mile if you'd like. Um, it's not uh, length dependent, our device. We are always continually enhancing our product. Uh, we're launching in October uh, the MMX product, which is a new uh, all-in-one OEM uh, design industrial system where we marry both a, uh, a PC and a low clearance interferometer in the same uh, container, basically, and rapid startup. In most instances, we're up and running on a processing line in a matter of minutes, not days. Uh, this is a little bit complicated, um, and it's on our website in an animation form, but basically light comes out of a um, superluminescent diode, a SLED or an LED. Um, it hits a surface, reflects back into the system. It hit, goes through the material, hits a second surface, whatever there's an index of refraction change, we collect that information. Basically, you can uh, equate it to uh, time of flight of light through a substrate. So we can see multiple layers in intimate contact that can be bonded together as long as there's a very slight uh, index of refraction change of 0 0.001, we can get a reflection and we can measure uh, each of those uh, thicknesses. Uh, we actually have in an R&D program, we're working with the human eye and we actually use it a different wavelength. We use our same technology. We send a beam of light into, along the optical axis of the human eye. We measure the corneal thickness. We measure the clear lens thickness. We measure back to the retina and we get reflections from each of those surfaces and can measure what's called the axial length. That's being developed for the ophthalmic industry and ultimately when it's implemented, when you have a cataract removed and an in IOL in place of the cataract, you'll get a better uh, post-surgical refractive result. It's easier to explain if you look at the website. Some of the old methods, believe it or not, some of our customers still take two straight edge razor blades put them in intimate contact, uh, slice, for example, a, a lens, and look at it under an uh, edge under an optical comparator. It's always interesting to go into a factory and see the operators there because they always have their tips of their fingers taped up to keep from getting themselves hurt. Not a very good way to do it. Uh, pin gauges, micrometers are still in, in uh, very prevalent use. Um, some of the new methods, You'll see an optical probe at the top left um, that's actually reading, I believe, a balloon wall. Uh, we're working on an advancement now to actually measure the cone wall thickness uh, as well as the um, ID and OD. Uh, to the right is what I call a roll system, which is a first generation. And we have at our booth today at 1680 the new Lemetra Scan 360, which can do up to 36 inch long catheter where we'll measure the outside diameter, the inside diameter, top and bottom wall. We'll spin the part or rotate the part and be able to measure concentricity and ovality. So you get all that data real time, however many slices along its length you'd like. Here's an interesting application. We tied it in with a vision system, but it's a um, a silicone uh, dipped mesh structure or measuring the thickness of the silicone between the mesh. Uh, we integrated a camera so you could actually see where the um, device was measuring. Uh, we partnered with a burst testing company on this particular device and this one's going into full factory automation. That's a typical optical probe. The optical probe is nothing fancy, it's a, a barrel attached to a optical fiber and some simple optics inside of it. Uh, why change inspection methods? Uh, generate new revenue. Uh, and these are quotes from real life customers. Some of them allow us to use our name. Some of them we just say customer A. 
Uh, without your optic gauge, I would not have been able to understand the process variables and manufacturing my balloon. They can get real-time data as they're making their product. Uh, Tesco, as I mentioned earlier, went from a four to six month startup to about four weeks. And they bought multiple systems from us. Um, we worked with subcontractors of, of the top five medical device manufacturing on film consistency. Um, film specs were so good I can tighten up product spec and produce a safer and more accurate final product. Uh, and FDA compliance. We've scrubbed all our software, as I said, Gauge r &Rs are exceptional. Uh, we have found over time, though, bad tooling, bad gauge r &Rs. You do good tooling, you get good results. Um, this is the device. It's at booth 1680, just down the hall. Um, it's designed as a 36-inch long measurement system. We actually have uh, real live demos going on. Inside the device itself, is all our instrumentation along those bottom three areas. Uh, we have multiple orders for multiple systems. Balloon measurement. Uh, we are adding on the Lumetra scan a uh, ability to add cone wall thickness. So we'll actually see an additional axis of movement. We'll be able to spin the part, measure at any point along that uh, cone itself, uh, up to the transition points, the thickness of your of your parts. We can do that manually now, but we want to do it in an automated manner. And we can do it inflated too. I forgot to mention that we use um, air collets, and we have inflation capability. Here's a, a typical generic balloon display. Uh, we found in our output of the measurement that we download CSV or Excel files into Excel templates. Uh, we develop Excel templates for customers. A lot of our customers with the young engineers that they have today are wonders at Excel and they can do their own template work. So uh, we offer that. Uh, we find the customers like it in this format. Uh, we can download data in other formats but the CSV automatically pops up. You develop a basically a picture of what you want to measure. You can use the you know green for go and red for no go um, if it's not within your process parameters. So unlimited recipe creation and measurement, automatic pass fail criteria display, multiple displays, modifiable in Excel. We've also done online work. Uh, we've done online uh, for catheter extrusion, and we have this system at our booth. We've done online for high-speed glass catheter extrusion or get glass uh, tubing uh, up to, I think, 1,400 feet per minute uh, with single and multiple probes. Uh, when you have multiple probes in that one particular device, you can pick up more data. Um, so that's pretty easy stuff now when we've had lots of experience in the field doing it with customers. Again, we go back to what does our customer look for? They want to buy from us because they want a better return on investment. Increased revenue, reduced costs, FDA compliance, lower your labor costs. And that's who we are. I'm John Hart, Steve Heaven smith I don't think has joined us, but he'll be here in a moment. And um, Steve Kelly is Vice President of Sales. With that, I'll take any questions. So the question is, what is the resolution um, or accuracy that we see on our product? In an idealized setting, because when you're in the factory floor, you have other parameters you have to deal with, but we spec out a tenth of a micron. So um, it's low coherence interferometry. It was actually developed uh, by Eastman Kodak in Rochester, and we licensed it from them. And they developed it originally for film support and film emulsion uh, layer measurement. And then they uh, moved that into their CCD array um, mounting and camera bodies. So in our lab, we, can, we, we are a tenth of a micron. When you get into the field, other things start to affect the measurement, but you don't see much variation from that.
Uh, we also, also developed, uh, because it was never an optical standard, um, we developed, and you can see that on our site, with one of our customers called Corning Tropel. Uh, Tropel is a photolithography company in Rochester, uh, very high precision optics. Uh, we developed an optical standard where we take a uh, double zero gauge block, which is a very accurate gauge block with a hole in the middle. We optically uh, ring, it's called, uh, optical, tenth wave optical flats to either side, which gives you an air gap. We read through the optical flats in a controlled temperature and humidity environment, and we now have a NIST certif certifiable air gap, uh, which we do for all our calibration of our device. The system itself co-propagates a laser inside the system, never comes outside the system, that actually calibrates the system constantly. And one of the features that becomes more and more important to customers is we can actually, if you have an optical switch, we put what we call a verification probe um, online. So you can take a time, if you take a reading, you can take a timestamp reading, you can take a optical verification reading at the same time to determine that you're measuring what you're supposed to be measuring. So it's almost like a, a continuous calibration. And more and more customers like that when they have online process, con you know, process measurement. Did I answer your question? Thank you very much. We're in booth 1680, not 19, whatever it was. And we're giving away great tchotchkes, so come down and see us. Thank you.